Hey team. So today I want to talk about your craft, what it is that, that you on a daily basis are a craftsperson at, um, a craftsman or a craftswoman at, what does that look like? We've, we've looked at the GPS. We, we went into that and I believe that's going to be your indicator as to what your actual craft is. Is it systems management? Is it, is it marketing? Is it making sure the verbiage is just, it's just perfect. Is it, crafting great strategies for clients to to get the home that they need is it crafting phenomenal strategies of how to create competition for clients is it crafting the perfect presentation so that you have the opportunity to serve different clients what is your craft and <clears throat> there, there's a lot right we all know that part of the craft is consultation the preparation that goes into a consultation prior to even arriving prior to, to coaching really consultation is a form of coaching and the better prepared you are to coach somebody the more that they will typically get out of it obviously the the the, the, the person receiving the coaching the student has to has to be willing to receive that and we help them set that up but i think oftentimes we think that we are not in the craft business that we're really not crafts people and it's easy to think that you know the crafts are are, are academics they're crafting great papers great ideas in that way or the crafts are people who who work with their hands artists this sort of thing but I want to I want to propose to all of all of you that your craft your role is is just as vital just as important and can have just the same effect on the mindset of other people as a great artist or a great academic or a great thinker, a great presenter. So I want to talk about the distractions to that. So in, in our forum ones, I've been really directing a lot of you to focus on when you're going to do positive things, when you're going to do things that help you get into the routine in the morning, what time do you have to wake up? What time do you have to get to bed in order to do that? What time, what does that cadence look like? Can you, can you actually sustain that on a daily basis? And I'm really trying to drill down into what what you need given your life circumstances in order to achieve at the highest level. There and, and it's a whole idea. It's 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 not just you show up at work and then you execute. Um, your personal life, your private life has to fuel your work life, and your work life has to fuel your personal life at a high level. And the two work in synergy. So uh, so finding what what those times are. And it occurred to me um, at about maybe the, the sixth conversation this week about this, that we also need time to ensure that we are doing things that are a distraction to our craft. And I want to propose to you, and I, I've, I've spoken to this before, but I, I want to speak to it in this way very specifically, that a distraction to your craft is anything that takes you away from your focused thought, your focused attention on something. So the prime indicators, and this book is great, the prime indicators for whether you're being distracted is, you know, when you when you plan something out and you say this should take about an hour, and then it ends up taking you two or three, you're probably getting distracted. So what are the what are the culprits? It could be a call from me that you that you decide to pick up even though you're focused on um, on your one thing, on your craft. It could be texts, it could be Snapchats, it could be incoming calls like I mentioned. It could be emails popping into the top section of your screen that distract your eye and bring your attention to something else, cause your attention to focus on, on another conversation. All of these things have a place, need to be attended to, but almost never are indicators that there's a fire that needs to be put out within the next hour or the next two hours. Oftentimes there are oftentimes things that you can pay attention to twice a day, very in a very focused manner and get them out of the way, but they are not the things that will actually make you successful. Replying to emails will not make you successful. Certainly replying to emails immediately will not make you successful. Replying to texts immediately will typically not make you successful. They won't make your marriages better. They won't make your relationships better. A thoughtful email or a thoughtful text 
or a call given back to somebody when you can focus on that person alone, that's what's going to make your relationship better. That's what's going to make the conversations much better because then they're get to getting your full attention during that time. So I want to propose to you that in your calendar, you have two times a day where you are actually checking your email and responding to things and two times a day when you're actually responding to phone calls and texts. Now texts, you know, if you're on the road and you can dictate a quick text and it's not a distraction to driving safely, that's fine. But understand that if it is during your time where you have set aside time to be with a client, to be with a builder, to be on the phone following up with prospects, with new leads that came in, it is a distraction and your work, your craft will suffer for it. Not only in the time that it takes you, but in, in the focus that you'll be able to give it. And there's, this book is great. It goes through all these psychological studies. And one of the interesting things that I read this morning was that not only does it distract you, but it makes, it exponentially affects in a negative way how, how much enjoyment you get out of the task. So you're actually getting far less enjoyment out of tasks that are distracted than tasks that are focused. In fact, there was a study um, done late 80s where um, a very well-known psycho psychologist um, actually measured the, the effect of work done with focus versus leisure time. And she actually found that work done with focus gave the person more happiness and satisfaction, more joy, if you will, than leisure time that was unstructured, which oftentimes it is. Very interesting that if you want to be really happy, focused work is, is where you're going to find the most happiness. Um, so it's your job to live the virtue of order such that you can focus. And that's what we're really getting down to is, is this virtue of order at, at a very basic level. Um, the, the, the custody of your time, if you will, actually makes you happier. Um, the final thing I'll share with you is that uh, is sort of a, a Steve McClatchy thought. Um, it's a thought, uh, uh, you know, the, the, there's the adage that showing up is 80% of the battle. Just showing up, showing up to work, showing up at the right time being physically present but if we drill down on that you can't if you're just physically present you may get 20 percent of it if you're mentally present you're probably 50 percent if you're mentally emotionally physically spiritually there present you're going to reap the highest benefit out of your time and uh this came up recently um, with with someone in my life and and i realized you know i need to spend the time um and in this case, it was, it was Elena, and we were trying to figure out when, we, when are we going to spend time? And the complaint was, well, gee, we don't spend enough time together. It's just sort of we're, we're distracted. It's the whirlwind. And the romantic says, well, I should, I should plan every single date night on a weekly basis. Um, it would be amazing if I was able to do that on a weekly basis. It's never happened that I've been able to plan two weeks in a row of distinct times and places to, to do a date night. So what I realized is that the romantic in me wanted to believe that that was possible just out of pure desire. The fact of the matter is, it's just not going to happen. No matter how much I desire it, the whirlwind takes advantage of me. But if I plan to, to be at the same place every week with her, and in our case, we picked a time of day where we knew we would have each other's undistracted attention. It was hard. We, we, we ended up finding about an hour, um, and, and, but we found it, and we know that consistently we will both show up to that time together um, on purpose, anticipating it for, for, the, for the other six days. And that in and of itself has already been a great, great thing for us in our relationship. Um, so show up, show up to your appointments by showing up, anticipating that you're going to have it, planning for it, being excited about it. You're going to get a lot more out of it. And the craft, in my case, the craft of being a husband requires specific time with Elena. 
And I believe that's the case for all of our relationships. We're in a relationship business. I believe that's the case for all of our focused time and energy. So I'll leave you with that for today. Thank you guys for listening. I know it's a long one, but just wanted to give you some reflection on, on all of my conversations with you guys. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I think you're all on the right track. Um, some of you order comes more naturally for others. It's more of a task. It's more of a trial, but I cannot encourage you more that it will be a tremendous reward and you'll actually be happier as a result of planning to spend that focus time and not be distracted. See you guys in the office.